So when I uploaded the video, uh, Songs of the Week Part 3, I saw that I was partially blocked in some countries. And that annoyed me a bit, but it, it wasn't something new. I was getting copyright strike all of the time. But this time, it was because of the song Down Under. And then I remembered the legal dispute behind the song, and I thought I could do a video about it. So the song Down Under came out in 1981 by Men at Work and it was an instant hit. For me personally, it is a perfect song to describe Australia. And one of my favorite parts of the song is the flute solo. And exactly this was the cause for the lawsuit. The problem was that Men at Work, in quotations, stole this part from another song. The song in question is an old Australian children's song named Kokobura. The company that owns the right to Kokobura then sued Men at Work, not regarding the fact that the children's song came out in the 30s and the lawsuit was made in 2010. That's a whopping 80 years later. Men at Work had their iconic song that made 48 million dollars stolen from some troglodytes with suits. The public was appropriately angry with the lawsuit. Both Kokobura and Down Under are beloved songs in Australia and no one had a problem with their resemblance of the flute solo. It was even acknowledged that Men at Work took inspiration from Kokobura and everyone was okay with that for over 30 years. The problem in my opinion is when business people get involved in art because they have no goddamn idea of how it works. You know, don't get me started with the NFTs, but this is a perfect indicator of how money grabs destroys art and the artists. We went from this to, to this imbecilic shit? You can't tell me that this is good art. They look goddamn disgusting, but I digress. Art is complicated. And I think that artists need to get more legal protection from big companies that blatantly steal their creations. But definitely not in this case. First of all, the song is extremely old. And even if it weren't, why are they suing 30 years after the release of Down Under? And that it makes no sense. The line between stealing and getting inspired is very thin, and this especially in music. For example, the whole process around sampling. You know, me, being a huge Tal the Creator fan, can tell you that the samples in his songs are not stolen because he modifies them by a large factor. When you sample a song, you remix it, and you add more things on top, or change your pitch and speed. And in the end, it's a completely different song. That's exactly what Men at Work did. You can't really call it sampling, but they changed the pitch and added drums and some vocals and, and, and made it a completely different listening experience. The thing that annoys me with these kinds of lawsuits isn't that it happened once, but that it happens often. I think one of the biggest lawsuits was uh, with George Harrison's My Sweet Lord. But there are plenty more to show, but I'm, I'm not, not going to read them down in the list. In this case, it was also business people claiming that, it, once again, a very old song got stolen by George Harrison. Now, in the end, that led George Harrison to make a song about the absurdity of this lawsuit, but he still lost $1.6 million. If a big artist gets sued, it it's a hassle. But they have enough money and resources to get through or even win the lawsuit. But now the problem is when smaller artists get into legal problems because it may be the end of the career. Men at work are definitely not small uh, creators, but they, they, it's still annoying to, to, to know that big companies will just make everything for a quick buck. So in conclusion, I I'm not mad that I get copyright striked on YouTube because I don't change anything in the song. I just show them. So it's un very understandable that I get striked. But now for artists that put a lot of work into these samples, it's really annoying because you did something new, you changed things, and you still get sued. That's about it.